Hi, I'm Linda Sparks. I'm the author of the book called The Basics of Corset Building, and I'm the owner of Farthingale's Corset Making Supplies. My company specializes in more than just corset products. We also sell hoop steel and other cage making supplies. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a basic cage crinoline and how to alter the shape of that cage by simply shortening or lengthening the steel wires that are used. This short cage crinoline demonstrates most aspects of crinoline making. There is a waistband with a closure. There are vertical tapes. These are made of Petersham ribbon. There are two open hoops. There are two closed hoops. Each closed hoop is made using a hoop connector. And there's an internal ribbon that I've pinned in place to help show you how to affect the balance of the cage crinoline. I'll talk more about this during the construction process. This turquoise and pink cage is exactly like the white cage shown earlier. But by adjusting the length of one of the hoops, the shape has been completely changed. I've also not used the tie that would affect the balance of the cage crinoline. And I've covered it with a stretch fabric that conforms to the shape of the cage. This is also a type of cage crinoline or hoop petticoat. There is a waistband with a closure. There are no vertical tapes. Instead, twill tape has been sewn onto the fabric to create casings for the hoops. There are open hoops at the top. There are closed hoops. Each closed hoop is made using a hoop connector. And instead of a single ribbon, there is a laced panel underneath which helps adjust the balance of the cage. It's very much like the short cage crinoline, but the construction techniques are slightly different. It is important to know that when you're making a long cage such as this one, the bottom hoop must be at least 8 to 10 inches above the ground. You can add a ruffle at the bottom if you'd like to add length, but the hoop needs to be high enough off the ground that your toe will not catch it if you're stepping forward. Now that you understand what the end results can be, I'd like to talk a little bit about the materials we use to make cage crinolines. So I have some materials here. I'm going to start with Petersham ribbon. So the Petersham ribbon is a lightweight ribbon and we use that for the tapes that hold the hoops in place. We can also use it for the waistband. So this is where I've used it as the waistband and I have covered belting. I want to show you the difference. So you can see how limp that is and how stiff it is once it has the belting in it. So this is what we want when we're using it for a waistband. We want it really nice and firm. And this is what we can use for the tapes. So that's belting. It's nice and stiff. It's inside the Petersham. And if you want, you can use fusible webbing to fuse the two together before you stitch it. This is the hoop steel. Now some people say you can use plastic, but I don't recommend it. Hoop steel has memory and that is what helps this hoop to stay, um, to spring out in a circular shape. So that's the hoop steel. And these are U-tips. And the U-tips go on to the end of the hoop steel in order to keep these sharp corners from cutting your casing. So you can see how these are rounded. So when you have an open hoop, you want these on the ends. These are hoop connectors. So this slides on. I'll see if I can slide that on from here. And then the other side of the hoop will slide in there to make a closed hoop. So it makes the creation of hoops really simple. And last but not least, we need a buckle. And this is a toothed buckle, so a slide buckle, which means that the waistband can be adjusted to any size. Whereas if we poke holes in a buckle, we have one inch increments. This means you can 
accurately fit the size over your waist, over a corset or anything else. So that is about it for the materials that are needed. There's really not much. And now we'll move on to making the hoop skirt. All right, so I'm gonna start with the waistband. And this is ultimately what I want the waistband to look like. It's two layers of Petersham with the buckle attached at one end and it's stitched down. So you might, I'm not sure if you can see the stitching there, but it's stitched down. And that is the final waistband. And we will be attaching the tapes to this. So how do we get there? This is the Petersham. It's a fairly long piece of Petersham. I've got it about eight to 10 inches longer than a, what the waist would be. And I've doubled it. So I've got two layers. The folded end is going to end up being the loose end. And the two cut ends, once they're attached, will go over the buckle. So what I like to do is to stiffen it a little bit. If I don't have belting, I use the fusible web. So I just use that fusible web. I sit it down in the middle I fold it over and I press it to fuse those two layers together the whole length of the waistband. And I have one pre-made here. So here it is and the stitching is very dark so you can see it. It's been fused together, folded at one end and then top stitched on either edge so that it's nice and secure. And again, I could easily have belting in there to make it stiffer. And now I'm gonna take this and I have to find my buckle. So I have the buckle and the buckle lays flat like this. And this tape, the raw end of the tape, has to go over that center bar. So it's going up and then over like that and then fold that back so that it's nice and secure and I'm going to stitch it right across there and I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch just to make sure it's nice and secure. Now I've done this in a contrasting color so that it's really obvious, but you would do it in a matching color. The end of the, the folded end then comes up through those teeth and underneath that bar. So once it's done up, you're not going to see the zigzag stitching anyway. And there is your waistband. Your waistband is complete. And we're ready to go on to the tapes that we're going to fit onto the waistband. The waistband is done, and now I'm ready to go on to the tapes. And the tapes are what hold the hoops in place. So here's my piece of Petersham. And it's folded in half. And I'm going to stitch across the top edge. Now I'll have eight of these and we have to make sure that the seam allowance at that raw edge is the same on every one of them. And I'm just going to use a narrow zigzag right across the top just for strength. So there we have it sewn across the top. I'm now going to turn it so that the stitching is on the inside. And I have a flat piece that I'm going to press. So I'm going to make sure that I take that to the iron and I press that seam really well and I press this fold really well. And just to cheat, 
I have one already done. So there's the folded end and there's the stitched end and it's been nice and firmly pressed. Now I have to mark them. I have to mark them with the length um, where I'm going to put my casings that's going to hold the steel. So my waistband is one inch and I want my folded edge to be at the top. I want that folded, that um, seamed edge to be at the waistband. So make sure you can see that there. So the seamed edge is going to be at the waistband. The waistband on this is one inch. So I need to mark one inch from the seam. So I've got one inch there, the waistband will go through that. And I'm then measuring down, and this is all sort of random. This one I'm measuring down about three inches. And then I'm dropping it another one inch because as much as my boning isn't one inch, my hoop steel isn't one inch, I want room for the, the hoop steel to settle where it needs to be. So it might need to be at the bottom, it might need to be at the top, I just want to give it a little bit of space. And then another three inches. Another three inches. And each one has about an inch. And then I'm about an inch up at the bottom as well. So I have my marks. And those marks now need to be stitched on every single one. So I have to do this to eight pieces. It's a lot of piddly stitching. So I'm going to put that aside. And again, I've cheated. So I'm not sure if you can see, but that has been stitched. And then I've got a casing. So the waistband, hoop, 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 and a fourth hoop down at the bottom. So I will have eight of these when I'm done. And I'm going to finish that a little bit later. I want to show you an option. You can make these decorative. So the tapes can be decorative if, you, if you've got an embroidery stitch on your machine. Notice that the embroidery is not on the back. It's up at the top a little bit. You embroider these before you make your casings because the hoop steel has to be able to go through just like this pencil is going through. So that embroidery is only on one side. Now to do that with Petersham, I found that I needed to use some fusible interfacing, interfacing just to stabilize the, the fabric. And then I did the embroidery stitch. But I still have the casings. It just makes it a little bit prettier. All right, we've done the, we've done the tapes and I'm going to get ready to put the waistband on to a mannequin and then put the tapes onto the waistband. So we have our waistband on our mannequin, we have our tapes on the waistband. The only thing that's left is the hoop steel and that's what I've got here. So again, I've got my hoop steel, I've got my tip, I've got my hoop connector, so I'm all set to go. And I've cheated a little bit. I have pre-cut my steel and I've used tin snips to do it. So I've cut it to the proper length and then I've nipped off the corners of the steel with my tin snips so that that tip will fit on really easily. And then I have these amazing pliers that are only available at Farthingales. And the tip goes in there And now that tip is secured and I have a number one at this end. I have a number two. So number one and number two are my open hoops so they have the U-tip on the end. And then my number three and my number four, those are my closed hoops so they have the hoop connector on them. 
Now that my steel is all ready, I can take these steels over to the mannequin that has the waistband and the tapes on it, and we can slide these into place and our cage will be complete. I'm ready to put my cage pieces together. I've placed the waistband with the tapes onto a dress form. If you don't have a dress form, you may need to get a friend to stand in for you. Move the tapes around the waistband until they're evenly spaced. They don't have to be exact as you can still adjust them later. Starting at the back, slide the number one hoop into the top casings of tapes. This will be the shortest of the tipped hoop wires. They should end at the closed casings at center front. Slide number two hoop in from the back as well. It too will end at center front. Slide a hoop connector onto the end of hoop wire number three and number four. Starting at the front this time, slide the hoop wire into the casings on either side of the front. I like the ends to meet at the center back. When the ends meet, slide the cut end of the steel into the open side of the connector. Repeat this for hoop number four. All of the hoops are now in the casings and you have to adjust the placement of the casings so that the hoops are balanced the way you want them. This is where you can play with shape. Adding ties to the inside of the cage will also change the silhouette and adding ties is important if you plan on draping heavy fabric over the cage as the weight of the fabric can distort the shape of the hoops. The ties will help stabilize the shape that you want. Notice how the hoops are resting within the tape openings. Some are at the top of the casings and some are in the middle or at the bottom. I pin the hoop in place and hand stitch the opening closed so that the hoop is resting where I want it. So you can see how simple it really is to make a cage crinoline. You make your waistbands, tooth buckle, make all of your straps or your tapes. You can decorate them if you want. Once the steels are in them, you can see exactly where they need to be placed and I'll be able to stitch that shut to secure them. I've added a ribbon in order to adjust the tilt of the cage. If I tighten that ribbon, it changes the tilt some more. So you have different ways of making the shape of the cage. By shortening or lengthening these hoops, you change the shape. Really a very simple project when you have the right materials and the right tools. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been easy to see how you can make many shapes from the same starting point. In this video, I've shown you how to Make a simple waistband with a buckle. Make the tapes to hold the hoop wires. Finish the cut ends of hoop wires with U-tips. Use hoop connectors to make the full hoops. Adjust the hoop wire lengths to create unique cage shapes. And use lacing ties to redistribute the cage balance. Cage crinolines are an amazing garment to play with, and they're fairly easy to wear. Just make sure the hoop wire you use is spring steel, so the cage doesn't get bent out of shape easily and is flexible enough to sit comfortably. I hope you've learned something from this video and will share it with others you know who might be interested. You can find all the supplies on the Farthingales website and on the Vogue Fabrics website. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for other videos, please email me 